while some argue that the next revolution in food cannot happen in the absence of genetically modified food, some argue against the health and possible environmental repercussions. Today we attempt to further this discourse here at the Debate Circle. I am your host, Stephanie Oshera, and our motion for today is genetically modified foods are critical in the fight against food insecurity. Proposing this motion, we have Jamuhuri High School, and opposing this motion, we have Mpesa Foundation Academy. All the best to the two teams. First proposer, you have three minutes. People are suffering. People are dying of because of world hunger, because of food hunger. But no, I have a solution. Yes, I have a solution. Can you guess what the solution is? The solution is genetically modified foods. My name is Wanjiro Judawema from Jamuri High School, here with you again to, to, propose, to propose the motion that states genetically modified foods are critical in the fight against food insecurity. Genetically modified foods are foods uh, de derived from organisms where genetically, genetic material has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally. We also have uh, food insecurity. Food insecurity is a state of, of being without reliable access to sufficient, to sufficient quantity of affordable nutritional, nutrition food. Again, food insecurity is the state of being without reliable access to sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food. And we also have critical. So what is critical? Critical uh, is ne necessary to make a whole, com complete, essential, or fundamental. So for my first point, we cannot rely anymore on weather patterns because our, 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 our food, our food, they're planted, right? The normal food. They are planted and they require a certain amount, they require uh, rain to grow. We cannot rely on weather patterns anymore. Because, for example, we've, not, we've had, we've, we, uh, for example, in Kenya, when was the last time we had long rains in Kenya? No, we have not. So we cannot rely, for example, maize. Maize requires a lot of water to grow, right? So due to the long rains, we do not produce as much as we used to do. You see, so we cannot rely on weather patterns to, to produce uh, foods anymore. And that's where genetically modified foods come in, you see. For my second point, genetically modified foods can be altered to increase nutrition, nutritional value. When these, the, when, these, the, when these foods, when you have increased nutritional value, you see, when you have an increased nutritional value, it increases the satisfaction of people. So there's no point of you eating too much food. So what does this prevent? It prevents obesity. It prevents obesity. So, so, so yes, GMFs, can all, can, they are even more nutritious if you compare to other normal foods. Yes. And with that, I end my submission. You say you have a solution. We say we have a better solution. My name is Anne Marit and I will be the first opposer of the motion that says genetically modified foods are critical in the fight against food insecurity. My second opposer will be Winnie Johannes and my third opposer will be Victory Myro. What are genetically modified foods? These are foods that are derived from organisms whose genetic material, or in other words, it's deoxyribonucleic acid, does not occur naturally. An example is introduction of a gene from a different organism. What is the meaning of critical? Extremely important. This is according to the Collins Dictionary. What is food insecurity? The state of being without reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food. Ladies and gentlemen, GMOs are not bad, but are they really critical? Do we really need them that much? They are helping in the fight against food insecurity, but they are not critical in the fight against food insecurity. As I go on, Globally, around 14% of food produced is lost between harvest and retail, 
while an estimated 17% of total global food production is wasted. 11% is wasted in households, 5% in the food service, 2% in retail. And the Food and Agricultural Organization says that if we stopped wasting all that food, we'd save enough to feed the 2 billion hungry people. That is twice the number of undernourished people in the world of today. Production of more food will lead to more wastage, which is not good for us. We have enough food to feed the hungry two billion. Why do we need to produce even more food? We don't. We just need to save on what we have. We need to maximize. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about sustainability. Are we really growing towards sustainability? Or are we creating more waste? Ladies and gentlemen, look at it in this way. If we manage to maximize what we have right now, if we manage to save the food we have right now, if we manage to stop the wastage of food we have right now, we can be able to replace the food that was supposed to be given to those people and we, we will give them and they will stop being hungry. So GMOs are not critical in the fight against food insecurity because we have food. We can grow food. We have agricultural industries. We just have to back them up with more funds. We just have to help farmers to grow better foods. You're talking about nutritional value. Okay, it's fine, but we are talking about food insecurity. And the foods, the, the, the foods we plant in the farm have nutritional value and it depends on the standards at which the farmer is planting these foods on. If we manage to help the farmers plant these foods at high standards, they will have this nutritional value and if we manage to support them, they will reach where we want them to reach. So ladies and gentlemen, GMOs are not critical in the fight against food insecurity. It's that simple. Thank you. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. I am from the Duke of Gloucester, a.k.a. the Green Army, a.k.a. Jamuri High School. You see, one day, this tie was fully green. But because of the campus flower, a yellow vine creeping in our administration block, we had to adapt. <laughs> we had to change. So what did we do? We encrypted yellow stripes on our ribbons. We encrypted yellow stripes on our ties to fit with the prevailing condition. And I'm sure we can all agree the boys do look stunning. <laughs> you see, once Mother Earth was green, but now it is not. Why? Yellow stripes, food insecurity, and what is the solution? Genetically modified foods. On to my first point, as the speaker, my first speaker has clearly stated, food insecurity is the state of being without reliable access to sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food. Reliable access to sufficient food. As many as 828 million people still go hungry. This is according to the UN Food Security Search from 2016 up to date. And you want to know why? Because, as she has stated, 17% of our organic foods get spoiled. So what does GMO offer? It offers longer shelf life for these foods. Therefore, these foods can be stored without getting expired than the organic foods which we plant, they get spoiled, they do not help us. But genetically modified foods help us. See, take it this way, there are only two types of food. Organic foods have failed. What is the only other option? Genetically modified foods, and yet you say it is not critical. A man to the ICU cannot live on himself. What is left? A life support machine. Genetically modified foods. And then, <laughs> as my first speaker stated, he said sustainability. He talked about sustainability. They are the ones, just before we went for lunch, talked about the problems of climate change and so on and so on. So what are some of the effects of climate change? It gives us unpredictable food patterns that lead to food insecurity. But production of food, genetically modified foods, is predictable. So one plus one, plus one minus one, zero problems. You see, as I finalize, I want to tell you one thing. You see, it is nurtured over natured, or nurtured plus natured. As long as nurtured is captured, for the future, we will all be well structured. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I rest my case. Second, the closing, you have three minutes to make your submissions.
allow me correct you. One plus one minus one is one and not zero. You've told us, you've told us about how food gets spoiled because of short shelf life and whatever. But this food never actually gets to the shelf. Do you know why? Sub-Saharan Africa has an estimated 37% food loss between harvest and storage. So our food, we plant food, we plant enough food to feed all of us, but we don't harvest it on time, that we leave it in the farms until the rains come again and the food gets destroyed. So the food is there. The food is there, it's just getting spoiled in our farms. And you know what the rich people are doing? They're buying more food than they can eat. You buy two loaves of bread, you eat a half of it and throw away one and a half of it because it got spoiled, you kept it in the shelf and you are not eating it. But we wanna make more. We have this consumption ideology that's always with us humans. We wanna produce more and more so we can fill our shelves and say, yes, we have food. But you know what? We don't need this extra food. We have enough food to feed all of us. I like your statistics. You told us that 800 and 828 billion million people are going hungry according to UN statistics. But the same FAO tells us that we waste enough food to feed 2 billion people. Way more people than, uh, than the ones who are hungry. So we have enough food. We do not need these GMOs, but we want to make them, we want to produce them and say they are better. We are producing solutions to problems that don't exist. If we want to solve food insecurity, we can channel this money into making better harvest, <coughs> harvest and storage facilities for the food that gets spoiled in sub-Saharan Africa. The West and the East and the developed world can stop wasting food and stop cons buying food that they will not eat. Look at this. Discovery, development, and authorization of new genetically modified organism cost 136 million US dollars. Why can't we just channel this money and make proper storage for food facilities for the food that is being spoiled in the farms in sub-Saharan Africa? Why can't we use this money to campaign against food wastage in the developed world? Then we have enough food for everybody. He talks of climate change. Do you know how much methane is produced by wasted food? When we waste food, when we throw away food, when the food spoils in the farm, that food rots. And in its rotting, or when it ends up in landfills, it produces CH4, which in other words, is methane. And we both know the effects of methane. I do not have to go into that. So we are, we are really putting more things to, to damage our climate. We are increasing our methane, methane production by producing more food so that we can waste it again, and it can produce methane, and we can ruin, ruin our planet completely. Ladies and gentlemen, genetically modified foods are a solution to a problem that does not exist. We can eat our food well, we can manage our consumption of food, and there's enough food for everybody. We do not need to make more. My name is Winnie Johannes. For the question session, the proposition has been asked that the definition of GMO now stretches into animal. Is it truly ethical for us to alter the genome structure of animals just so that we can be able to make more food? And to the opposers, they have been asked to give practical ways in which we can curb food shortage in the advancement of their arguments. Third proposal, you have three minutes. I begin in three, two, one. My elegant name is Rob Wong from Jamuri High School. First of all, I start with a question which was about animals. Well, you do biology, right? What do animals eat? What does a cow eat? Crops. We need to increase the crops and increase the number of animals so that you can never die. Um, and here, we're also looking at the larger part, okay? You see, in our country, Kenya, uh, when you look at livestock and, livestock and um, crops, which one has a greater value here? We're looking at crops, mostly. That's why we're focusing on critical um, points here. As a responsible father, I wouldn't want to see my children die hungry or sleep hungry. And that's why I come here with better means. Remember, we are, not, we are not removing natural foods. We are looking for solution. Someone, the first opposer came and talked about better solution. You do math, we all do maths. When you have seven and you need 10, what do you do? You add three, that's the solution. Now, um, when uh, he talked about maximizing, when you should maximize our food, Yes, exactly. Maximizing leads to scarcity, right? That's, therefore, we need more extra food. Um, yes, 
Thank you for supporting us. The food gets spoiled. But remember, my second proposal came and said that we are looking into crops that are resistant to spoilage. You didn't get that correct. Um, when you talked about wastage of food, methane, the same concept. Um, let me quote something from East African newspaper dated to Tuesday, October 4th, 2022, whereby Prime, uh, the President William Ruto, Monday, on Monday, chaired a cabinet meeting, lifting the second mem memoratorium that uh, restricted importation of GMF. Approval comes in the wake of a biting drought. A biting drought. Approval meant to allow imports of GMF, uh, GMF maize at cheaper cost. So cheaper cost and drought resistant. Do you get the point there? Drought resistant crops. You see, in Africa, there are many dry areas that are, are not able to get crops, right? And therefore, we need that drought resistant crops so that it can increase our food supply. Um, you see, back in my days, in 1950, the Hawaiian papaya suffered from 50%. In 1950, the Hawaiian papaya suffered from 50% drop in production from ring spot virus. Do you know that? What that, what that virus is? Okay, nice. But were genetically modified to go against the virus, and now we have the papaya. A round of applause for that. Okay, over supplying results resulting from food scarcity will lead to this. We lead to better. Oh, exactly. You see, there's banana shortage. How many are we in front of here? We are two teams. But because of genetically modified crops, we have two. <laughs> and therefore, I'm going to join my brother Brian and go fight corruption because I have energy. I'm full. Private Closer, you have three minutes to make your submissions. Ladies and gentlemen, they speak of the art of fatherhood. I say, as a responsible father, it is your obligation to ensure that your children do not waste food. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they have talked about longer shelf life. Can you look at the banana they've given us? Is this what they mean by longer shelf life? And thank you so much. We have had bananas for lunch and we are satiated. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to talk about food wasted, the question asked from Alliance. In my school, it is a disciplinary issue if you as much as poor as a, something as large as a piece of carrot. If all the schools in Kenya did that, if only all the schools in Kenya did that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about better storage facilities. Let the government... As he has said, our, our, His Excellency William Ruto has ordered for the importation. When we are importing, we are using so much money. Why don't we better our storage facilities? That is what we are saying. That is what we are saying. Ladies and gentlemen, not taking more than is needed. We had maize shortage, and everyone was at least allowed to take the amount of maize they needed. That is what we are talking about for development. That is what we are talking about. We are not saying we use much money to take, to, to actually manufacture things that require, require lab technicians, require new technology, require things that are not found in our countries. I would like to point out the fact that only developing countries in Africa are actually using these genetically modified foods in a large scale. Look at South Africa, look at Nigeria, their GDP is way above. What about the lower income countries? Ladies and gentlemen, think they are dying. Yes, they are dying because they don't have this money to import things that they cannot manufacture in their homes. Think again. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also saying that by, by using GMOs, we are actually bringing about some problems that require so much money. What am I talking about? They have said that GMOs are resistant to pesticides. That means, have you heard of a phenomenon called antibiotic resistance? I will explain it in a minute. You will know of it. Ladies and gentlemen, when, these, when pests actually inhibit these genetically modified crops, because they, they, they actually mutate to a point where we, we actually, the, the pesticides that we currently have are not enough 
are not enough to, to actually curb these pesticides. So we use stronger pesticides, ladies and gentlemen. By these stronger pesticides, we are using pesticides that contain glyphosate. Glyphosate is a cancer-causing carcinogen. For your information. So we are actually... We are actually endangering these people who work in these farms. What is more expensive than human life, ladies and gentlemen? We are talking about a life-sustaining machine, but this machine has conditions, this machine has money. So let us utilize what we have. What we cannot actually use, let us leave it alone. I rest my case. Thank you. Proposition, one minute for closing submissions. <sighs> St. Paul's University, I came in as a student. I was turned into a teacher and now they're reducing me into a janitor. You know why? I have to sweep their unsubstantial claims. <laughs> you see, one thing I really hate is being misquoted. I said plus one minus one is zero. Clear? Yes. Okay, we are the only actual people offering the critical uh, what is critically needed in order to fight food insecurity. They are only telling us the problem. They are telling, they are telling us that it is general ignorance, that it is because of our ignorance that 17% of the food is wasted. Last time out, we said that general igno ignorance is actually a problem. Let me give you a simple is in a illustration. You have a problem with your kidney. Do you opt for a kidney transplant or you opt to seek back in your deathbed and only hope that it will get better. You, should, you cannot tell us, no, we should not waste food, we should not, we can't just sit back, we just have to offer this critical solution. And then they're saying that we are using so much money to import GM foods. Their assumption is that we cannot use this money to create our own genetically modified foods. Cancer causing, they said. Betty Mugo 2012 is the one, that was the health minister that banned genetically modified crops after an assumption that it will cause cancer. But after a review, that ban and our own president, William Ruto, lifted it. And with that, I rest my Opposition, one minute for closing submissions. Your theatrics are quite interesting. But let me remind you that they can never overcome logic. They can never overcome facts. Let's look at the country with the highest food security in the world, Finland. Do you know Finland has almost no GMOs on its shelves, but it has the highest food security. You know why? Because they maximize on their consumption. They take only what they use. And if you have a problem with your kidney, you don't need a pr transplant if you can fix the kidney. You, you're going to use more money. You're going to get somebody's kidney, which is going to take way more procedures, and you don't know if you will die in the process. Just fix your kidney. It's so simple. And we're talking about the developing world. I just told you we need $136 million to fix for discovery, development, and authorization of genetically modified foods. We are developing worlds. Where are we going to get this money? We can so simply build better storage facilities, which if you were listening keenly, you'd have heard me mention it over and over again. And we say there's nothing wrong with genetically modified foods. It's the pesticides in them that is causing, that has the carcinogens for cancer. Rest me. <laughs> Jamuhuri High School. I felt that Roy and Jeffrey did an excellent job in convincing me as well as the audience and keeping the audience um, engaged. Judah, your flow was wanting um, to a great extent, particularly at the beginning. And to the opposing team, uh, MPESA, the three of you girls um, were actually articulate. I liked the voice modulation by Anne and Victory. I think that was very good. Winnie and the rebuttals you had on theatrics versus facts, that was also very convincing for me. Uh, I think for the short time you had, you, you articulated relevant claims for the subject. This is a tiebreaker and it's normally unprecedented. So sometimes what has to be done has to be done. I really want to appreciate the creativity I have seen on the floor, especially this one. For me, the creativity, if there was a max for creativity, it goes to the second speaker. That is Geoffrey, right? Very creative. Congratulations on that, all right? 
a team is as strong as each thread that, that holds it. And if there was any, anything defining here, is how was teamwork done, especially when it comes to how are you presenting as a team in terms of your style, in terms of your mastery, in terms of your passion and conviction. As we say it again, mastery of topic was going to be very fairly checked on because of the time given. So all the best to the two teams, let's wait for the results. This was so close. It was very, very close. Jamu Huri garnered 69%. A round of applause for them. <laughs> Impressa Foundation Academy has made away with 70%, <laughs> making them the winner of this particular debate. Thank you so much for making time. Congratulations to both teams on stage. Thank you so much for making time in the audience and you at home for viewing us. As usual, we are the home of high school debates, so do make sure to stay tuned for more. I have been your host, Stefan Yashira, and I will see you in the next one.